Most research studies are based on exploring possible relationships between concepts. These concepts need to be operationally defined. As we know that concepts have general definitions or theoretical definitions, but in the research context, we need to define them in the specific research context. And so that kind of definition is generally called operational definitions. Now, what are operational definitions? Why do we need to make use of operational definitions in research context? And uh, what are some examples of operational definitions? These are the questions that we will respond to in the remaining presentation. Now, first of all, operational definition, what it is. And operational definitions, uh, operational definitions are definitions of terms, concepts, and processes in academic or research projects. So one way in which we can define the operational, the concept of operational definition is that operational definitions are definitions of concepts that provide meanings, functions, and scope to the terms or the concepts or the processes that we make use of in particular research context. Here are some examples of concepts or constructs um, that need to have operational definitions in particular research context. Um, intelligence, for example, um, academic achievement, income, age, maturity, development, experience, and so on. So these are some of the concepts that we make use of in research context. And in each case, we need to, um, although we might know the theoretical definitions of these terms in our particular research context, we need to operationally define these. Now, why is it that we need to have operational definitions um, in our research studies? Um, there are several reasons because of which we need operational definitions in our research studies. So the first one is that Operational definitions actually help us in specifying and focusing the meaning of research terms and processes. Um, as I said in the beginning, research terms or concepts might have general or several uh, definitions and meanings. So when we are making use of these terms in our specific research context, we need to be clear and uh, we need to have specific definitions, operational definitions, so that the readers uh, of our research know in what ways we have particularly defined those terms and used those terms in our research. Secondly, um, operational definitions help in turning theoretical concepts into measurable concrete constructs. So as we know that in a mostly theoretical concepts are theoretical, which actually means that they have been defined in particular theoretical ways. But to properly measure those um, or to evaluate those concepts in our research context, we need to make them measurable and more concrete. And so for that, we need operational definitions. And lastly, operational definitions, the process of, uh, of defining our terms and concepts operationally in our research context, bring in objectivity, uniformity, generalizability, and replicability to the process of research and to the process of application and measurement of these research terms and processes. Um, in our particular context. So objectivity actually means that 
the proper definition, the particular definition or the operational definition in our context make the process and product of the research more objective. Uniformity actually means that the same construct is used throughout the research project and may be generalizable to other uh, similar research contexts so that if other researchers want to replicate um, our concepts and our research process um, in their context, they have the, 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 the operational definitions will actually help that process. So operational definitions uh, bring in objectivity, uniformity, and generalizability, and it makes the replicability of the research product and process possible. Now lastly, how? So here are some examples that will help you in understanding how to actually practically implement or to understand the concept of uh, operational definition in a practical sense. So for example, if a researcher is interested in exploring the relationship between students' intelligence and their academic achievement, we have two main concepts here, intelligence and academic achievement. And as we know that both of these have been theoretically defined in several ways. Intelligence has multiple connotations or, or theoretical meanings. Um, similarly, academics have variously defined academic achievement. Um, and so if we want to make use of or to find out a relationship between intelligence and academic achievement in our specific context or in our study, we need to clearly define, um, technically define what do we mean in our research by intelligence and what do we mean in our research by academic achievement. Also, how are we going to measure intelligence in our own context and how are we going to measure, calculate academic achievement in our own context. The second example is, uh, for example, in this uh, possible topic, impact of so, uh, psychological well-being on teachers' teaching performance. Again, psychological well-being has um, multiple factors and so it has been um, defined, it might have been defined in several ways. Um, and similarly, teacher performance. Again, there are several ways in which one can, um, can analyze or can define teaching performance. So the reader needs to know uh, in what ways the researcher has taken the concept of psychological well-being in their particular research study and similarly in what ways they have defined and operationalized uh, teaching performance in the particular context. So in, in this case, like the previous one, we need to clearly define what do we as researchers mean by psychological well-being and how have we actually uh, uh, measured psychological well-being in our own study and similarly how have we uh, measured teaching performance and then how have we uh, actually operationalized the impact of or evaluated the impact of psychological well-being on teaching performance. And the last one, um, the last example here is effect of overpopulation on the quality of life in a country. Again, you can see overpopulation could be quite a subjective term and um, in different contexts, overpopulation might mean different, uh, different to different people. For example, overpopulation could be taken in terms of the number of people in particular geographical location. Uh, or per square mile. It could also be taken in terms of the number of people in a, a per family in a particular area or country. Similarly, the quality of life might have been differently defined. 
So what we need to do basically is to clearly define overpopulation in our context and to clearly define the, what do we actually mean by uh, the quality of life in, in our context. So clear operational practical definitions of these terms in our particular research concept will make the process of research more objective. The process of, of calculation and evaluation of these terms clearer and this will make the research process more authentic and this will increase the chances of replicability of the research process.